Hi and welcome back. In this video we're going to just learn about some of the basics of working with the Dreamweaver um, window. So you can see here this is going to be the way uh, Dreamweaver CS6 appears um, right after it installs if you haven't made any um, changes to it. And if you've never used an Adobe application before, if you're used to maybe Microsoft applications, the way Adobe organizes its um, tools can be a little bit um, uh, disconcerting for you, uh, but just for a second. The main areas of the screen are you've got your menu bar up here at the top. We also have some special menus that are represented by icons right here. You've got your panel area over here to the right. And whenever I say um, in any of the videos, go ahead and look at your panels, what I'm talking about is this area right over here. And then down here at the bottom, you actually have your properties panel. So we have our menus up here at the top, our panels over here to the right, and our properties at the bottom. Now, these tabs here open and close different sections. For example, right now, you can see I'm in the file section. And that's pretty obvious from what we can see here. If I click on Assets, I'll move to that tab in the window. So we can very easily go back and forth between those two different sets of controls. Now, you can see above it, I have Business Catalyst, and I can't see anything underneath that. But if I click on it, you'll see that that area does appear. If I click it again, nothing happens. But if I double click it, it collapses. So in doing this, in expanding and collapsing the different windows by clicking and double clicking, you can show or hide tools that you use or that you need and still have the maximum available space. If I click on CSS styles here or AP elements or double click on insert, you'll see that the more uh, tabs I open up, the less each one has, or the less space each one has. But I can simply double click and collapse those anytime that I want. And you can also move these tabs around, group them differently just by um, dragging them and um, dropping them. And the same thing is also true for the properties panel right down here. You can see I don't have a page open right now, so this is grayed out. But if I was to open up a page, you'll see the tools come to life. And I can also double click and click that to open and close that panel. And that, again, gives me more space to actually see the page that I'm actually working on here. And to open up a page, we're going to see how to set up a site and create pages in that site in just a little bit. But I've got uh, just a few sample pages right here. And to open that up, I've just been double-clicking on it and then clicking this X right there to close it. So you can expand and collapse these different areas. Now, you also have the window menu right up here at the top. And if I go to the window menu, you can see that Files has a check mark next to it. If I click on Assets, you'll switch over, over to that panel. So this is just another way of getting to the exact same um, item. Now, you're going to notice Actually, let me go ahead and close that off there really quick. I did that too quickly. Um, right now, there's nothing over here in my panels window for history. And if I wanted to open up the histories panel, I would go to the window menu and select that option. And when I do that, you're going to see a new panel and a new tab appears here. You can close these in, again, a couple different ways. I can simply double click on it, and it collapses it down. And you can see it made history real small there. And then I can click it to bring it back up.
So collapsing it is sort of like closing it, but you can also go to this drop down menu here in the upper right corner of that and you can select close or close tab group. Now in this case I only have one tab here so closing it will do the exact same thing as close tab group it makes it disappear. You can see history is no longer um, available there. I can turn it back on though by going to my window menu and selecting history. If I was to come here and say close on the files item you'll see it closes just that tab and if I wanted to bring that back up again I can click on files and you'll see it reappears there. If I come here to close tab groups it's going to close both files and assets. But if I was to come back to window and click on files it'll open that back up and just for good measure it opened up the other tabs that by default show up in that group. So the important thing that I want to point out to you uh, at this point is that if you don't see a particular tab here if I say at one point click on the assets panel and you don't see it you can go to the window menu and click on that option to go to it. So you can always open up any panel from the window menu. And again, I like to expand and collapse these different items just so that I have the most space possible to um, work on the screen. One other thing you can do with the panels group right over here is you're going to see up at the very top, we've got these drop down menus right here, but up at the very top you're going to see a couple of double arrows. And if I click that it's going to shrink down my properties panel even more so that instead of seeing any of the tabs as being open all I see are the titles. I can still get access to these different panels by clicking the button and you'll see files opens up there or assets opens up there or whatever you want to get access to. Some people myself included prefer the panels to work in this way as opposed to this way here. But you can expand and collapse them um, either way. Whichever way works the best for you, feel free to use that. Most of the time though I'm going to have these collapsed so that I can just click the button and see the panel open up in its full view and then just click it again when I no longer need um, access to that. And again what that does is it gives me the maximum amount of space especially when I double click on properties here to make it small. It gives me the maximum amount of space to work on the page that I'm working in. Um, some people um, even go so far as to move the panels completely off the page onto um, another monitor if you have dual monitors and you can do that but that's a little bit clumsy and obviously I couldn't record um, that in a video so we're going to work uh, I'm going to work with these um, collapsed but you can feel free to do again do uh, this either way um, that you want also know that there's a view menu right up here that has a lot of different um, controls on it. This may be something you want to explore just a little uh, bit. Now I'm going to go ahead now and click on files and I'm going to actually open up a sample file here. And you don't have to do this. I just want you to see one more item um, in this video. When I opened up that page, you're going to notice that, again, the page opens up, but then there's another toolbar up here at the top that also has a tab called process.html. 
and that's the name of the page that I actually opened up. If I double click on layers.html, you'll see that another tab appears here, and here is that page. And I can very easily click to go back and forth between those open pages. So I can have, you know, 20 open pages inside of Dreamweaver and be very easily moving back and forth between those pages. If you want to close a page, obviously you can go to the file menu here. Here's the close option. There's also a close all, which um, many times I've wished that this was a default um, in Microsoft Word. You can actually add it in Word, but it's not there as a default. And you can also see there's save, save as, and save all which again, you're probably familiar with from other applications, but close all or save all will save or close all of the open documents at once. And then below the different tabs here, you have some, you have a toolbar here. And the important item that I want to point your attention to in this video are the different view buttons here. The two basic views inside of Dreamweaver are going to be code view that you actually see the HTML or the CSS that you're working on and design view, which is more of a layout view. And you'll see um, more about what I mean um, when I say layout view um, as we start actually building web pages. Um, and then we have split here, which actually puts the code on one side and the layout or design view on another side. There's also a live view here and a preview in browser. We'll talk more about those two options um, in a later video. Most of our work in this series is going to be in code view. And that should be probably 90% of the time where you're actually working. Design view has um, a definite use and it's very valuable inside of Dreamweaver, but a lot of people use it in place of code view. And that will lead to problems down the road. This is really just a layout view for you to work with. And you'll see um, what I mean again um, when I say layout just a little bit um, um, in just a little bit. So you've got these different view buttons that you can go back and forth inside of. Um, so whenever I say switch into code view or switch into design view, that's what I mean these two buttons right here. And I very rarely ever use um, split view, but you'll see the uh, you'll see that every once in a while. And then again to close my pages, I could go to the file menu and use close or close all. Or I can just click the X to the right of the page to close a particular page that I have open. So that's just the basics of the Dreamweaver um, window. And again, I'm taking for granted that you know um, what new, open, close, save, save as, exit, what all of those commands do. Things like cut, copy, and paste we're not going to um, um, cover in um, this class because you should be familiar with those options from other um, applications. In the next video, we're going to actually go ahead and set up the framework for um, a new website inside of Dreamweaver and see how to put pages and how to add assets to um, your project. So I'll see you in the next video.